Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you what dead lithium is and how to stop it from happening. Batteries produce a voltage by exchanging electrons from one metal that wants to give them up to another metal that wants to receive them. For example, let me show you how easy it is to make a potato battery. This is zinc and this is copper. Now watch what happens when I plug these into the potato. Put one in here, copper on the other side, zinc on this side, and plug the final one in and it works. <laughs> it seems like the potatoes are the thing that's giving it power here, but really it's the zinc electrode. The zinc electrode really wants to give up its electrons to make zinc two plus ions, but it has to have somewhere to put them. So when we stick it in the potato, since the potato is a little bit acidic, that means it has some extra H plus ions in it. So the electrons can go directly from the zinc to the H plus ions to make hydrogen gas. But the problem is the surface of zinc isn't very good at combining H plus ions to make hydrogen gas. It happens much easier on copper. So that means that if you connect the zinc to some copper, then the electrons will flow through the wire to the copper and make hydrogen gas on the surface of the copper electrode. For example, you can see this if I just put zinc in a dilute acid here. After a little bit, we'll see some bubbles forming on the surface of the zinc. These tiny bubbles that are forming here are hydrogen. So with just zinc in there, it can form hydrogen. But if now I put the copper electrode in here as well, and you can see the hydrogen forming on the copper instead of the zinc. This means that the electrons, instead of just making hydrogen on the surface of the zinc, it flows through the wire to the copper to make the hydrogen over there. So there's a current flowing through the wire that we can use here. What we have here is the simplest and first battery ever made by Alessandro Volta, where we get the word volts from. But there's another metal that's better than zinc for making batteries, and it loves to give off electrons, lithium. Lithium, like sodium, easily gives off electrons, so much that if you just put it in water, it explodes because of the buildup of hydrogen. Now, lithium is great for batteries because you can make the forward and reverse reaction very controlled. For example, in a lithium ion battery, you have lithium metal layered between graphene sheets. This lithium metal can form lithium ions that migrate to the other electrode to form a metal oxide, and the electrons flow through the wire to the other electrode. The nice thing about this setup is that once your lithium has reacted, if you just apply power to the electrodes in reverse polarity, it will charge the battery by moving the lithium back to the carbon sheets. Now we know this works really well. This is why lithium ion batteries are used in almost every electronic device today. But if you've had a cell phone for more than a few years, you know the problem with lithium ion batteries is that over time the battery starts to run out quicker than it did when it was newer. So over time you get less and less power out of a full charge. So you end up having to walk around with another lithium ion battery like this one. So why does this happen? Why do lithium ion batteries degrade like this? Well, it has to do with something called dead lithium. Now, remember I mentioned that these lithium ions are traveling back and forth between the cathode and the anode. When the battery is recharging, the lithium is supposed to get stacked nicely between these graphene sheets. But if the current or voltage gets too high, lithium can also grow on itself and make little dendrites or branches of lithium that stick out. When the branches get disconnected from the main bulk of lithium, it can't transfer its electrons anymore, so it makes this island of isolated lithium that can't be used anymore, because it can't transfer its electrons to the other side. This is now called dead lithium. And when there's more dead lithium ions, the overall number of active lithium that release and restore electrons is reduced, bringing down the battery capacity. And what's more is that not only do you have less overall lithium to react in your battery, but you also have these dead lithium islands physically blocking the other lithium ions from moving from the anode to the cathode. That's why old batteries have a really short battery life. So with a normal phone, after about two years or 300 charge cycles, your battery has only about 80% of the battery life it used to have. But what can you do about this? Well, there's a long list of things you can do with most of them being pretty inconvenient and only slightly helping. Some of these things include not letting it drain completely or not letting it sit charging at 100% for a long time or not letting it charge too quickly. But wouldn't it be nice if there was a phone that actually actively monitored and took actions against dead lithium forming? Well, there's a company called Oppo that sponsored this video and they created a technology called the Battery Health Engine. This is specific software that monitors the potential on the negative electrode, which is also a key indicator of the condition of dead lithium inside a battery. 
This allows for real-time feedback of the voltage and current on the negative electrode that the Oppo battery health engine can use to adjust the charging current and voltage to a suitable level, hence reducing the formation of lithium branches and eventually reducing the number of dead lithium. The software can do this for different battery capacities, charging adapters, battery states, and charging stages by accurately judging the negative electrode potential. That means that no matter the state of your battery or what you're using to charge it, the health engine will maximize the lithium ion activity and prolong the battery lifespan without having to slow down the charging speed. So instead of getting to 80% of your original battery life after three to 400 cycles like in other major cell phone brands, you can get 1600 charge cycles before you reach 80%. This is a huge improvement. It essentially doubles the entire battery life compared to other leading products. It also has a battery healing technology. This means that they have a specific electrolyte solution that can repair the solid electrolyte interface in the battery, and this further improves the battery function. This battery is available now in their new phone, the Reno 8 Pro. The Reno 8 Pro is backed by a 4500 milliamp hour battery with 80 watt SuperVOOC fast charging. It can charge to 50% in just 11 minutes, and it's built for safety with a cutting edge five layer charging protection system, AKA the safe fast charge system. So if you want to try out their new phone and check out the awesome battery life, click the link in my description. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.